Greetings fellow citizens of the United States of America. We are anonymous. We would like to take some time to speak to you about revolution. This will be broken up into three videos, so please do not forget to catch parts two and three. These videos are not directed at any specific party, religion or class. This information should be consumed by all citizens who have not yet had the privilege. Once we all know the truth we can begin to communicate with each other on what to do about it. For those of you who, after watching this, are still skeptical, we applaud you and implore you to check a few references we left in the descriptions of the videos. This will get you started, the rest is up to you. A test to see how much you really care about democracy, freedom, and the future of America. We are not here to hold your hand, only to temporarily guide you to a better path. Going down this path is a choice which you, and you alone can make. We have listened to the many voices in America. We have heard stories from all sides. Doing so has led us to a few points of thought we would like to share with you. Over the years, our collective has helped bring many of you to the light which either we ourselves, or other vigilant individuals and groups, have shown on the truth of things. We are here to do this once more. What we have noticed is people want to be heard, they want their personal struggles to be recognized. People are full of fear, anxiety and hate due to political, religious and economic instability. This is where we all have common ground, and once we take time to understand each other more, we find this ground is much larger than we at first thought. Most of us on a basic level all want the same things. To be viewed as human beings with basic rights, liberties and freedoms. To be allowed to protect our families and property. To live in peace with our neighbors in a safe and healthy environment so that our children may grow up whole and sound. These are things the vast majority of us seek and fight for, yet we all go about so differently, and it is these differences which spark fires of hatred which not only hinder our efforts, but put our very own national security at risk. We must all learn to understand each other and work together or we will most certainly perish. So, please follow us down this path of enlightenment, and once we cross together to the other side, take a moment to reflect, look around you with new eyes and hopefully you will join your fellow citizens in conversations on a better future for us all. For clarity, we will stick to the following definitions when referring to revolution. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary's simple definition of revolution. Number 1. The usually violent attempt by many people to end the rule of one government and start a new one. Number 2. A sudden, extreme, or complete change in the way people live, work, etc. Number 3. The action of moving around something in a path that is similar to a circle. Now, on with the show. Starting from the beginning. The American Revolution, 1765. Very few of us will go against the common narrative that the American Revolution and the following war for independence were just and righteous, which brought forth the democracy and freedoms we enjoy today. The typical story of fighting over taxation without representation and basic liberty is deeply embedded in most people. A feeling of mistrust amongst citizens against government is a part of being American, and the powers that be know it. But, what many of us believe about the founding of America is a misconception which has been drilled into you deliberately. This brainwashing is of great use to those who know how to utilize it, and they have been perfecting its use for years. Now there are some of you at this point saying, yeah, I know where this is going, nothing new. Well, we say this. Did you really think it was as simple as many sources would lead you to believe? What many of you are finding is candy for the desperate mob, left for you by the real masters behind the curtain and greedy individuals seeking to profit off your naivety and willingness to be led. If you are not actually checking sources and doing your research, if you do not really know history, then things are not what many of you may think. The American Revolution was not fought over taxation, or lack of representation. It was fought over the actual enforcement of civil law on smugglers and tax collection, the legal right to take land from indigenous North American tribes, and the legality of owning slaves. Yes, the British had levied taxes on all sorts of stuff, and much of it was unfair, unjust. Yet we state that the colonists over time stood up and began to push back this tyranny. This was seen by a handful of greedy criminal elites not only as a threat, but an opportunity to take advantage of. Soon the peaceful and successful efforts and actions of good people would be overrun by the violent influence of a handful of crooks. What the patriots were fighting for and what a handful of elites were using them for, were two different things. Sometimes their motives, 
whether clear or not, did correlate, but many people did not know exactly what was going on and had only the given narrative to fix focus. The whole issue of taxation without representation was a smokescreen. Some taxes were levied and enforced by colonial governance, and if not hindered may have grown in popularity and practice. The fact is that there were corrupt individuals who were unjustly smuggling goods without paying British taxes. Though the colonies were seeing some new taxes due to British war debt from their wars in North America, the defense that the British were taxing too heavy was a lie. In fact they had lowered and even cut many taxes. The colonists were already paying the least amount out of all other colonies under British rule. But for some though, all this was not enough. Please follow us as we attempt to shed further light on this. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 ceded land rights to the French and native indigenous tribes west of the Appalachian Mountains. This prevented the colonists and frontiersmen from further taking land from the Native Americans. This was followed up by and enforced with the Quebec Act, part of what became known as the Intolerable Acts, which included the Massachusetts Government Act and the Quartering Act. This was all an outcome of a handful of corrupted elites who did not want representation or lower taxes, but in truth really wanted absolutely no taxes and no competition with legitimate business owners. So they had a couple tea parties and were sanctioned by the British Parliament. Due to this, the rest of the colonists were also inadvertently sanctioned, and because the British response was an unfair and unjust political and economic punishment, it was taken by the colonists as the act of tyranny it was, rather than a punishment towards a handful of bullies and criminals. The British Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 had its roots in a court decision in 1772. Lord Mansfield's judgment in the Somerset case emancipated a slave in England, which helped launch the movement to abolish slavery. The case ruled that slavery was unsupported by law in England and no authority could be exercised on slaves entering English or Scottish soil. By 1783, an anti-slavery movement to abolish the slave trade throughout the empire had begun among the British public. This news, like that of its kind today, spread quickly and ruffled the feathers of those corrupted individuals who owned slaves in the colonies. These people saw the Royal Proclamation of 1763 and the Intolerable Acts as not only a threat to their uncivilized way of life, but as a weakness in the British Empire which they sought to exploit for personal gain. They saw the obviously upcoming Slavery Abolition Act as a threat to their way of a life of leisure and easy profit. It was only too easy to use the unfortunate, naive and underprivileged, the smugglers and criminals. They and the crooked elites had already formed bonds while undermining the British government through smuggling. It was of little effort to transfer this to overthrowing the empire. The majority of colonists were no different than most people today. They wanted to feel informed, but did not have the time and or education to think too deeply on things. They were weary to trust, but did not have time and resources to do their own research, and therefore had need to trust. At the end of the day they wanted to be left alone to live their busy lives, not caring at all what is in charge, as long as their lives went on as close to normal and moral as they could tolerate. The Patriots were only a small percent of the populace. The majority of them were underprivileged, uneducated and financially insecure. A good portion of them were smugglers and criminals. Their leadership was quite opposite, very privileged, educated and carrying wealth with plenty of resources. These leaders knew how to use the misfortunes of others. They understood how to harness the energy of their misguided emotions. They turned their fears and insecurities of survival and status into anger and hatred towards the government. The corrupt elite found it easy to exploit and use these emotions to commit violence for their own personal gain, with as little personal risk as possible. We were raised to believe the Patriots won the war and went home to enjoy the freedoms they sacrificed for, but this is also untrue. In fact, these people who were deceived into fighting an unjust cause, went home to another fight. While they were busy in battle, the corrupt individuals pulling their strings were racking up debt. This debt was transferred to the Patriots as they came home from war. They were troubled with so much debt and taxes many of them lost their homes and farms. This worked well for the corrupt elites under the new system of government, which only they had the time and resources to build. Now only landowners were allowed to vote, and the new landowners were now few and they began to work together to control and manipulate the new American democracy. The whole time this was to be done by forcefully taking land from indigenous tribes while using African slaves and indentured servants to do most of the manual labor. The people now known as Americans had become overtaxed, beat down with debt, with little to no representation and with the blood of natives and slaves on their hands. They were worse off than before the war for independence. 
When this came to a breaking point, which did not take long, the renewed rebels were charged, some hung and others hunted down by what in today would be called private military contractors, or mercenaries. Meanwhile, overseas in France, the French citizens were gearing up for their own form of bloody revolution. Their government had gone into debt to help the American patriots during their war for independence. There was little money left for upkeep of infrastructure and what was left was squandered by their royal family. Soon the impoverished and starving French people overthrew this corruption and had an ultra-violent overextended corrupted revolution. So, the belligerent and corrupt American elites really overthrew two governments. Furthermore the aftermath of the American Revolution later led to the ethnic cleansing and near extermination of the native indigenous tribes of America, and the extension of the African slave trade. To keep perspective, the government which the American patriots overthrew, even before our civil war and the abolishment of slavery in America, had ships taking on slave traders off the coast of Africa, giving them fines and imprisoning them. So, no, the American Revolution was not just nor righteous. Anonymous is not here to mislead lie to or take advantage of you. We are not here to instigate violent revolution or even to overthrow the American government. We are here to spread information previously only available to those of wealth. We are here to help you see a side of things normally kept from sight. We only want to help you on the path of critical thinking and deep thought, in hopes that you too will wake up and see what we see. The truth is always stranger than fiction, and yes, it will set you free, but only after it makes you angry and you turn that anger into positive action, towards righteous goals. The colonists were well on their way to change, when it was stripped from them by a handful of individuals. They had stood up together and got the British government to listen and act, yet some had to push it further. Those people took advantage of the situation and people's emotions, they twisted the truth and misled people, and they pushed and pushed until violence was inevitable. All along the colonists thought they were fighting for representation, while a handful of crooked elites were actually using them for their own nefarious means. As more and more people were gaining their rights, freedoms and liberty, a cloak of evil came and put an end to it. This is all very important to know, to remember, for it is happening again. As we see more and more of our fellow citizens, family members and friends gain their own rights, after years of struggle, we also see that same cloak of evil beginning to envelop our society. Those trying to tip the scale, trying to cause a new violent revolution or civil war in America. Things are really messed up and we the people all know it. There are many players vying for our allegiance. Many people twisting the truth and playing with our emotions. We have to make a choice, right now, are we going to push forward and help our imperfect society and government communicate, heal and continue to grow, to become better, or are we going to allow a handful of corrupted individuals to steal the show, control us and ruin everything? The fact we all have the freedom to affect change, and change we have seen, should stand as a light for us all. Just like the British Empire back in the day, today our government is imperfect. Like before we can affect change through peace against seemingly impossible odds. When we do it brings us all that much closer and strengthens our culture and society. We urge you, our fellow citizens to think about this, to really take a look at what is playing out before us. The future will most definitely be different, and change is inevitable, but will it look how you hope? Will you be able to live with what is done? Will our children grow up in a more caring, accepting and understanding culture than we have, or will we come full circle and start all over again? Our next video will touch base on the current and ongoing American revolutions, what is really going on, some of the players and the possible effects of current events. We will also touch on the differences and connections of the three definitions of revolution. Our third and final video will attempt to educate you on what role you can play in the already ongoing peaceful and non-violent revolution, and hopefully provide you with some knowledge, tools and resources to help make and keep you safe, effective and efficient. We thank you for your time and patience. Stay safe, vigilant and informed, for knowledge is power. Good night, and good lulls. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.